I like to think of myself as a student of the craft. Finding old style books, looking at images of different eras, it's a great way to anticipate the next hot look. The A-line bob, the clean pixie, the bouffant, the highlighted shag, and the tousled flip. All great styles created by innovative stylists and worn by beautiful, iconic women. I like to look at history through a stylist's mirror. And so to me, that means that there are no dead looks. Just looks waiting to be reinvented. All right, gather round, please, everybody. Who is he talking to? Please, everyone, gather round so you can hear. I want to make sure everybody's within earshot. We're the only two here. All right. Well, nonetheless, we have morning announcements. We've never done morning announcements Good morning before. to the both of you. OK, as you all know, Sylvie is out this week, but she's asked me to make sure that we don't miss a beat. Now, this is a charge I take very seriously, and I want to make sure we all look sharp, chic, and we shine bright like a diamond. Here we go. Uh, we have a full schedule this morning. Viv, you have a cut in color. Alice, a perm, and I have a blow dry in style. A perm? Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Really? Yeah, I love perms. Okay, hmm. team. I'm not a fan. Team, team. Trying to have a morning meeting right now. All right, so I've staggered out the appointments so that today none of us will get hung up. You know, why would you say you're not a fan? I just worry that guests don't really know what they're asking when they ask for a perm. Well, I mean, solid communication is key, of course. No, it's just so tedious and visualizing the style. Oh, well, I would disagree there. Visualizing the style is I don't think it's my... so much tedious as it is a dexterity challenge. But it never looks good right out of the chair. You feel mm -hmm. like you have to rush the guest out. OK, well, you know, you could have asked me. I could have helped you out. But sometimes you just need to see beyond the curl. See beyond the curl. That's deep. OK, team, stop right now, please. All right, I'm trying to do this right now, OK? All right, one, two, three, Luma. OK, so morning meeting. Um, I think it's all really clear. Alice? Crystal. Meeting adjourned? I think so. Oh, but hey, thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. You're welcome. Yeah. Good talk, all right? That went well, yeah. Welcome to Studio Luma. Hi, I have a nine o'clock appointment. Missy. Hi, Missy. I'm Alice. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Could I get you a coffee or water? Coffee with cream would be great. All right. Oh, thank you. Here you are. Thanks. My hair is naturally straight, but I've always preferred curls. When I was a teenager, I got my first perm. Oh, I loved it. My friends loved it. I felt confident. I was young, energetic, carefree. Time went by and styles changed and my perm became a thing of the past. <laughs> I can't help feeling like a little bit of my youth went with it. Now my hair feels flat and lifeless. I need some inspiration. I want to recapture a little bit of what I lost. Maybe Alice can help. I bet you think I'm crazy. Why would I think that? Because I want a perm. Oh, no, hardly. Really? Really. I love curls, and perms get a really bad rap. Right? It's like the punchline to a bad joke for stylists. Well, not here and not with me. I am telling you, a modified take on the perm is going to be all the rage in the next six months. You think so? And you know, for a lot of people, it's not so much about the curl as it is about the body. Exactly. What did you have in mind specifically? A spiral. Like this. Oh. Is that dated? Well, what makes it dated is the styling. In the 80s, everything was, well, pretty big. <laughs> Lots of gel and hairspray. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what about this picture did you like specifically? Um, well, I like the way that it doesn't hang just straight down, like mine does now. OK. What do you think about the curl? I like the curl. It doesn't necessarily have to be that curly. Agreed. I would make it more contemporary. So I think we can use a larger rod, and that'll make for a looser curl. Will a looser curl still stay? Yes. Perms have come a long way in the last 20 years. We can get nice big curls that stay. 
What looked like the perm I had in high school? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> I loved the way it looked back then, but I don't want people thinking I'm stuck in the 80s. You know, I think with the styling and with a larger curl, it's going to look a lot more contemporary. Plus, I've got a great mousse that will keep it nice and soft and let it flow in the wind. Sounds great. All right, now with a perm, there is a fair amount of maintenance involved. I remember. I'm fine with it. All right, so we can talk product as we go. Perfect. I'm really looking forward to this. Me too. I think it's gonna look beautiful. Thank you, Alice. Of course. Waves of beauty. Smearing skin with manure. Rinsing hair in urine. Rubbing crushed bugs and fish scales on lips to enhance a pout? History's jam-packed with genuinely gross, sometimes dangerous, and unquestionably ugly things in the pursuit of beauty. A doctor would lose his license if he prescribed tapeworms for weight loss in patients today. But other things haven't changed that much, like perms. Chemicals are the same as when women tortured their hair for all the glamour of looking like a scouring pad. We still use thio, ammonium thioglycolate acid, ATG, glycerol monothioglycolate acid, GMT, or substitutes that are still thio compounds. There are five main perm formulations, each using one of these chemicals. Formulations differ based on conditioning or other added treatments for specific hair types and textures. Differences you need to know to match up with guest hair expectations. Alkaline. Small molecules aggressively invade the hair strand, producing firm curls on coarse or resistant, low porosity hair. This type's also great for specialty perms on certain types of hair because it doesn't require a processing cap. Acid balanced. Larger molecules gently penetrate hair, producing soft, versatile curls. Body heat's needed for processing, which means a cap is too. It's best for medium to fine textured hair with normal or high porosity. Exothermic. The alkaline base mixes with hydrogen peroxide to create a chemical reaction, requiring a cap to keep in the heat. This reaction causes the cuticle to really soften and open up, meaning molecules penetrate thoroughly. That's why exothermic's such a good choice for creating firm curls in coarse or low porosity resistant hair. Endothermic. Large molecules gently transform hair by producing soft yet firm curls. Heat's needed for processing, so use a cap to prevent the solution from drying out while your guest sits under a hooded dryer. It works for all textures and hair with normal or varying porosities on the same strand. Thiofree. Used as an ATG substitute. Most commonly, cysteamine or mercaptamine. But these are sister compounds still in the thio family. These types are marketed as damage-free, but that isn't always true. Some of these gentle formulas can really rough you up. In high concentrations, they can seriously beat up hair, especially if your guest gets regular perms. Thiofree perms produce medium to fine curls and are well suited for hair with normal or high porosity. Each perm formulation has its own reason for being based on what it does to and for hair. Understanding the up and downsides of each will help you give guests the individual look they want despite the one thing these chemicals still are capable of doing. The price we pay for beauty these days is all about dollars and cents, not whatever damaging or disgusting things around that we're willing to slather on. Because even though squished bugs and pee also remain common ingredients, through time we've at least gotten expert at purifying, perfuming, and packaging them to forget it. May I touch your hair? Yes. Have you ever had a reaction to perm solution before? No, but I do remember that with all the rods, it got kind of heavy, especially on my neck. Kind of hurt when they rinsed it. Mm, that can be tricky. We can make sure to make you as comfortable as possible when we do the rinse. Okay, scalp's clean of abrasions, so we're good to go there. Medium texture and porosity, and medium density. Enough density that her hair will take a lot of rods. All right, we can get you drained and shampooed over at the bowl. Sounds good. Feels perfect. Feels good. Mm -hmm.
I'll use a clarifying shampoo. It strips away any product that's on the hair surface. No massage before a perm. Don't want the scalp stimulated. Back to my station. Sounds good. Okay, oh, could I ask you a question first, though? Sure, what is it? Um, I'm kind of a history nut, a hair history nut. Okay. And um, what was it really like in the 80s? It was fantastic. <sighs> was it? We were big and bold and beautiful. It just seems like such an amazing time. It was. Glam was everything. The higher the hair, the bigger the statement. I'd sit in front of the mirror with friends forever, teasing my curls, working them. Had to be just right. Really? Really. We played hard. We needed hair that could keep up. <sighs> oh, man. I wish I could go back. Yeah. So do I. The wild ride of Bond's disulfide. Roller coasters. Some people just love the idea of that slow, deliberate climb to the top, only to cut loose, going down! The twists, turns, and spinny spirals of this ride are similar to what happens to hair structure during a perm. Bonds in the hair take a bumpy chemical ride, but settle down once the ride's over. So let's dip into the topic of bonds and their role in altering shape. Deep inside each strand of hair, polypeptide chains link to one another through three types of side bonds, hydrogen, salt, and disulfide. There are a lot of hydrogen bonds. You already know they easily break down with water or heat. Salt bonds also break easily when the pH of hair is altered, leaving us with disulfide bonds. There are fewer of these than hydrogen or salt bonds. But what they lack in number, they make up in strength. These are tough bonds that don't break easily. Disulfide bonds are chemical bonds. Di means two, specifically two atoms. The type of atom? Sulfur. In fact, if you accidentally burn or singe hair, you smell the sulfur. It stinks like rotten eggs, or uh, worse. Sulfur's present in an amino acid called cysteine. So disulfide bonds are also known as cysteine linkages. Anyway, these pairs of sulfur atoms are bonded, linked, like they're holding hands. That is, until someone gives them a ride on the permanent wave roller coaster. Hairs and rods, perming solutions applied, and instead of those bonds lining up across from each other, <laughs> the link between them falls away, like they took a crazy corkscrew twist. The neutralizer comes along and the stretched links realign into the new pattern shaped by the perm rod. Wherever you see a curl, that's where the bond was separated and realigned. Now you'd think that all the disulfide bonds in the hair are affected when you apply perm solution. Nope. Less than half of all the disulfide bonds take that chemical ride when the perm solution's applied. When you apply the neutralizer, which snaps those bonds into their new home, not all of them participate. One out of 10 refuses to lock in. Now that is one stubborn bond. Of the disulfide bonds that do reform into brand new curls, they aren't going anywhere. Not until more chemicals come along to change them. Which means when your guest gets a permanent wave, it's permanent. All those pretty twirls and swirls of curls last a lot longer than a roller coaster ride. A wide tooth comb to make sure this long hair of hers doesn't snarl or snag. And spray on some leave-in treatment, never conditioner, 
The treatment equalizes the hair. It helps the cuticle to lay down so it's not so porous. Big, loose curls for her, so peach rods. Not quite the biggest size in the salon, but close. Section her hair. A center part nose to nape to start, then ear to ear. Get all this front hair clipped out of the way. And then the back. Wrapping from the bottom up. So a horizontal subsection at the nape to start. Just about an inch wide, about the same diameter as the rod. Elevate the hair, straight out, medium tension. Bookend the paper lengthwise and slide it down to the ends. And wrap the rod vertically. Rod straight up and down. Wrapping the direction of the curl to the left, all the way down to the scalp. Long hair, long way home. Securing all the caps on the bottom. When they're capped on top, it's awkward for me. I have to tug and pull at the hair more than if they're capped facing down. Second subsection, triangular shaped. That's one of the tricks for fitting all the rods I'm gonna roll. Alternating the diagonal part line for each subsection. Sometimes the triangle's wide part is on the bottom. Next subsection, it's on top. Still wrapping to the left, keeping good tension on the hair. I don't want my lefty Lucy. Last subsection here by the nape. Diagonal parting. The wide part of the triangle is on top. Wrapping down by the nape means I have to leave just a little slack on the rod. It needs some movement at the scalp. That way, all the rods will fit into the shampoo bowl without tearing or pulling her hair. Moving on up, next subsection. The diameter of the rod determines the size of the subsection. Each time I move up another row, I switch the wrap direction of the rod. So I'll start on the right side and wrap the curl to the right. Alternating like this, starting left, then going right, then left again, it makes for a beautiful blended look. Not a big deal if the ends converge on a spiral wrap. And the wrapping reminds me of a corkscrew, winding your way up the rod and then down to the scalp. Zip that end paper down to the tip and roll to the right. Both hands play a part in doing the twist. Aiming the rod so it's top lands just below the part line. Triangular subsection, 
diagonal parting is how I get it. It's a long, twisty ride down to the scalp. I'll make sure to work the twists out of the band before I snap it down. To fit all this hair, I've got to start low on the rod, keep it vertical, then twist, turn, corkscrew, and wind to the base. Last two subsections on this row. Keeping myself positioned in front of the work, not off the side. Ergonomically, it's better on me, and it's better for the curl. I can wrap vertically if I'm centered on the work. If I don't do that, I can get way off base, like literally. Another horizontal subsection, another row of rods, and this time wrapping to the left. Got my rhythm with this wrapping. Rhythm and consistency. All right, I'm above her ears with my wrapping, so I'm gonna make a full horseshoe subsection. Carrying the horizontal part line all the way around her head. I'll blend these front and back sections now. It makes it easier as I work my way up her head with the rods. Not changing anything about the wrapping technique, still one continuous row of rods. This is my fourth row, which means I'll wrap the rods to the right. Winding the rod. A little overlap of the hair is just fine, down to where it lives on the scalp. Snap the cap. Changing the parting on each subsection before I wrap makes room for all these rods. It lets them stack on top of each other. Last one for this section, I'll just keep moving up the head. Elevation is straight out from the scalp. And roll to the right.
Starting on the left, it means wrapping the curl to the left. Alternating the direction of the curl combined with the large size of the rods, that's what's gonna give her the natural looking waves. Carving out horseshoe-shaped sections around the head. Clean partings. The higher I go on the head, the more I have to pay attention to which direction I'm wrapping. Kind of starts blending together. Triangular shaped subsection, combing it into control. It's important that her hair is evenly wet. It helps the ends stick to the paper and stay where I want them. Funny. Not every stylist likes the spiral wrapping. I love it. To me, it's relaxing. I'm in a zone. A spiral zone. Keeping subsections elevated, wrapping so that the rod lands below the part line. Rod is perpendicular to the part line. My geometry teacher would be so proud of me. Last rod for this fringe area. Start the wrap low on the rod and wind up the curl. When I'm winding, the band winds and twists right along with me. It helps to let that band just untwist itself and flop down before snapping the cap. Last two sections, getting down to the end here. Still directing hair straight out from the scalp before I wrap. Okay, this may be a personal perming record. I've used 99 rods so far. Man, this wrap's gonna break 100.
It gets a little tricky up here at the apex. Just need to remember to direct the hair out from the scalp. Remember what direction I'm wrapping and be glad that there's just enough room on the head for one last rod. Get some barrier cream around her hairline. Need to keep her skin safe from any chemical burns. Yep, all the hairline. Even if it means sneaking behind the rods to cover it. Follow up with some cotton strip to catch the drips. Use a T-pin to open up the perm solution. It keeps the hole small enough so I can control how much I want and where. Three swipes of solution along the length of each and every rod. Giving a little twist to make sure I saturate the hair underneath. Following the order I wrap the rods to apply the solution. I like to be precise with this. If my aim's straight instead of sloppy, I don't need to double up on cotton. Under a cap to process. Medium temp and water pressure to rinse, for her sake. I wish this could be a quick process because lying backwards with a bunch of rods on your head is not comfortable. It's the price of perm beauty. With all these rods in her hair, this isn't a five minute one and done rinse. Every rod gets attention. Every rod gets blotted. Because if all the rods are drippy with water, the neutralizer can't penetrate very well to do its job. Another dose of berry cream and cotton coming right up. T-pin in the neutralizer bottle. Same application technique. Three swipes along the length of the rod, applying in the same order I wrap the rods. Each rod gets a good soak. Rinsing part two, at least five minutes. Doesn't take as long for neutralizer to process. Not like that perm solution. Kinda weird, but perms can get messed up at this phase. 
can't rush processing because this is when the bonds reform. Then again, if neutralizer sits on the hair too long, it can overprocess and frizz the hair. Checked her curl pattern earlier and it was looking good. It still looks good. Peach rods don't give mega curl, more like easy breezy waves. Less 80s. Once I get this bottom row out, she can comfortably rest in the shampoo bowl. Down she goes. I'll get these end papers off now and toss them in the trash. One last rinse, just to make sure any residue from the neutralizer is out of her hair. Okay, so quick rinse of the rods. Get them out of the shampoo bowl. Of course, I could just leave him here for Brand. Oh, that'd be so much fun to mess with him. Psych. I really wasn't looking forward to coming in today. I've wanted to perm for some time, but frankly, haven't had the courage recently to ask. A year ago, I talked to a stylist about it. I was embarrassed by his response, so. I made up an excuse to leave on the spot. Today, right from the beginning, Alice has been so open and honest. It seems like she really enjoys styling and wants me to be happy. The perm means a lot to me, but just as important is her attitude. I'll spray on some conditioner to bring out the shine and take out the tingles. Do a quick little blot to soak up the water. It doesn't remove the conditioner, it actually helps it penetrate better. Some lightweight mousse to reinforce the wavy shape. Nothing too heavy, you don't wanna weigh the hair down. And scrunch, scrunch, scrunch at the scalp and all the way around. A diffuser with fingers defines the curl while drying the hair. Take a subsection, capture the ends, and sort of wind my way up to the scalp. The fingers hold onto the hair so it lifts at the scalp. Keeping the blow dryer at a low temp, not using the force of the air to dry her hair, but the heat. Tipping her head helps collect those ends. Oh yeah, spiral perm, you are officially in the 21st century now. So what do you think? Alice, I love it. Oh, you do? Yes, I'm very happy. Oh, good, I'm happy that you're happy. Oh, brings me back, but it's hip. It's different, but feels familiar. See, that's exactly what I was hoping you would say. You know, you still get the volume and the curl, but it doesn't feel dated. It's fresh and fun. 
Alice, I love it. Thank you. All right, is there anything you'd like me to change or adjust before you go? Nope, not a thing. Awesome. Well, then we can talk about care maintenance when we check you out. There was a time, 25 years ago, when everything came into focus for me. Life made sense and I was in control. I was my best self. I wondered if that feeling was gone for good. In a small way, Alice helped me feel like that again. My best. I know I can't go back, but she took what I cared about and brought it forward with a new twist. This is the product that I was mentioning earlier. It's a mousse that will help define your curl and add moisture back into your hair. I do remember my hair becoming dry after getting permed. You know, I'd also recommend a leave-in conditioner to help with that moisture. I have a leave-in conditioner at home, but I will take the mousse. All right. I'd like to see you again in eight weeks for a deep conditioning treatment and a trim. That will help add the bounce back into your curl and keep your hair healthy. Sounds good. All right. Um, Wednesday the 15th, same time? Sure. Could you email me a reminder? No problem. There you are. And here is my card with the appointment time on it. Please tell your friends about us. I will. All right, well, thank you so much for coming in today, Missy. It was great to meet you. It was great to meet you, Alice. You did a great job. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to ask, how was the perm? Fun and stylish. Reluctantly, I would have to agree with you. She looked great. She's ahead of the curve. Six months from now, it's gonna be all the rage. Okay, I'm not too sure about all that. No, she's right. People are naturally drawn to people with curls. Uh-huh. Day one of five in the books. Not easy being in charge? I miss Sylvie. Well, thanks. No, I didn't mean it like that. I don't know how she does it. Well, for starters, she has a great staff. You guys did awesome today. Thank you. It feels weird to be one down. I can't wait till she's back. Ditto. Me three. We work as a team. It's not the same without a fourth. True. Well, you two can go. I'm gonna close up. Sylvie wants me to be attentive daily to my administrative duties. I prefer not to let her down. I am an artist. Artist. A person who is able by virtue of imagination and talent or skill to create works of aesthetic value. To me, that means using my gifts to create something that my guests care deeply about. And in my eyes, that goes beyond fad or trend or fashion. It goes to the heart of why I do what I do and why my guests come to see me, to make them feel good and confident and beautiful. And through that process, I get to express myself using color, shape, and texture. I like being an artist. 